Senior correspondent John Miller, a former NYPD deputy commissioner, is here along with trial attorney and legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Her husband is a former NYPD commissioner. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Okay, John, first I'm going to start with you. So the complaint charges that these officers failed to follow proper tactics. How do you see it? I think the way I see it, the way anybody in the New York City Police Department would see it, the way the highest court in New York State would see it, and they've gone on record saying, a police officer reacting, making split-second decisions, for instance, when somebody murders somebody on the street, as in this case, and then pulls out a gun and points it, and then attempts to fire that gun at the officers, when they're making those split-second decisions, it is very hard, if not totally unfair, to try and second-guess that with the 20 things they would have, could have, should have, might have done um, a year later. Ricky, how do you see it? Well, I think that you can see this case from both sides. I think that the side that John advocates, which is the side my husband would advocate, which is to say, look, these police officers did the right thing under the circumstances. Circumstances were very stressful. On the other hand, this is a well-written, well-thought-out complaint by a very good mm -hmm. lawyer who has a history of looking at civil rights violations on the part of police officers or corrections officers. She says these police officers did 19 separate acts of negligence. And then she says that their training had 16 points that were also negligent. So this is not just some let's say that the police were negligent. She's going to show how they were negligent. Ultimately, this case will settle. Okay, so I you would, and John are in to conflict say, over this? We in are in complete conflict. Exactly. Although, we're still best friends. Okay. <laughs> and you work for her husband. <laughs> That's true, so... Well, let me, but, but let me I, challenge I, you on that, sure. though, because, as Ricky points out, this is a pretty good complaint, and they've got a good lawyer, and the suit uh, mentions this 2008 Rand Corporation study of NYPD's training program and says the police department has not trained its officers in the recommended ways, including using more tasers, sensitizing officers to the sound of gunfire. Why hasn't the NYPD implemented that? I think that using a taser against a person who pulls a gun on you and fires it after murdering somebody on the street is a little bit like bringing a knife to a gunfight. The Rand Corporation lives in a lovely place out in Santa Monica near the beach, where they can think big thoughts and charge big money. But the fact is, when you've got a homicide on the street yeah. and somebody pulls a weapon on you, you've been through 104 hours in the Academy of Firearms training, 64 of those tactics alone. You don't have you any qualify sympathy for these twice victims here. who are... Oh, who, we have to separate these two issues. Yeah. One is, she deserves whatever help and financial yeah. assistance the city should give her, including damages. But to get there by claiming gross negligence on the part of two police officers confronted by a man with well, a gun. So the after issue for you is how the police respond and, and how much freedom they have to respond, right? And, and, and the issue no. is the law is quite clear on that. You okay. can't question cops on split second decisions if they're basically doing what they're supposed to well, do. You, Ricky. you cannot. However, you can question their training and supervision. So what the plaintiff is going to do is get an expert to say in another police department, in an urban area where you have a live shooter, what is the appropriate training? And I guarantee you that this lawyer is going to find a good expert to say that in light of the Rand Corporation study that the training should have been changed. Remember this, these two officers who are not bad people, who are not bad guys, who really did a good thing by killing the shooter, ultimately these two officers are from the 4-6 precinct in the Bronx. They may react faster the plaintiff would say, when they are doing a detail around the Empire State Building. They're used to a different kind of work. Place. I think when you have a complaint that challenges the training, you have to look at the bigger picture, which is the statistics show that New York City police officers fire their weapons less than any other police department in any other major city statistically. The statistics also show when New York City police officers fire their weapons, they fire the weapons fewer times okay. in each well, incident. One last point. Uh, she suggested there be a settlement. Is that what's going to happen in this case? I think that should have happened in the first 90 days. When they that filed would have been notice preferable. Of, when they filed their notice of claim, the city should have stepped up and done the right thing rather than put these cops in this position. Thank you, John. Thank you, Ricky. You're welcome.